The Plaza Theater is a historic building that still stands at the heart of downtown El Paso. Although it has faced many hardships over the years, El Pasoans stepped up to save the beloved theater. The theater uh, was built in 1929. It opened on September 12, 1930. The original owner was a businessman by the name of Louis Dent from Dallas. And Mr. Dent hired an architect by the name of W. Scott Dunn and they worked together and designed this as a Spanish colonial architectural um, theater as a show palace and they designed it so specifically it's really meant to be a 1700 uh, or 17, uh, 1700 Spanish hacienda. So all of, the, all of the atmospheric effect is meant to transport someone who comes here uh, to a Spanish hacienda and when you sit in the theater itself, you're sitting in a Spanish garden with stars above and clouds that move across the sky. The theater was built in 1929 and didn't stop even though the Great Depression had hit and affected almost everyone in America. It opened its doors on September 12, 1930 and boasted to be the best and biggest theater between Los Angeles and Dallas. The theater is an atmospheric um, theater, an atmospheric uh, a theater were very, very um, popular in, in the 20s and 30s in the United States. And everybody was trying to outdo everybody else, New York, uh, Los Angeles, Dallas. And the idea was to have a theater that had stars and uh, clouds and make it as attractive and as opulent, luxurious as possible. Some were Chinese theaters, other were Greek theaters, and uh, we chose, back in 1929, a Spanish motif. And, um, you know, people went and they thought when they walked in that they were outside because the stars were where they were supposed to be. The plaza was a beautiful and atmospheric place. But just over a year after it opened its doors, it started to experience hard times. People weren't able to afford the 35 cent seats during the Great Depression. By the 1970s, interstate theaters abandoned the Plaza Theater. The Plaza began to be stripped of its history. In 1972, the Grand Wolitzer organ was sold to a Dallas collector. The, the pipe organ was here in 1930 when the theater opened. It was designed to accompany silent films. This wasn't a place that showed silent films. They ended around 1927, but people liked the sound. They liked the atmosphere that it created. It's a neat kind of sound if you've heard it. And so it was integral to this theater. People's memories were tied around an organist uh, warming up the crowd. Uh, before the movies and shows, and so we, we really wanted to bring it back as kind of the heart of the theater, and we located it, and we were successful, and now it's back home. In 1986, a study of downtown land showed that the best way to use the plaza was to turn it into a parking lot. That is when the donations started pouring in. So in the 1980s, we'll say about 1985, uh, we were afraid it would be demolished. We needed to raise about $1.2 million. So in two months, uh, we raised it because this theater is so beloved and loved by the citizens of El Paso. Everybody contributed from uh, businesses to wealthy people to just working class people all helped us. And so a combination of everybody meant we raised the money and were able to rescue it. A group of citizens um, got together with the El Paso Foundation to find the money to save it from being a parking lot. And that's where it all started. Um, <clears throat> the foundation bought the theater. Luckily, we, we, um, it did not get demolished. And, um, in 1991, I retired from the city of El Paso and went to work with the foundation. And the first project that I was assigned to was to restore the theater. And so Mrs. Wendell says, here's the key to the theater. 
Um, God bless you. Let's get it restored. From 91, 1991 to about the year 2000, we tried different things. We tried, uh, now that the foundation owned the theater, we tried to make it a movie theater in the 1993s, 94s. We tried, we went for a, an improvement, uh, approval of the city. We got voted yes, and then it was vetoed. To make a long story short, there was a lot of politics between 1992 and, and the year 2000. At that point, the foundation developed a task force to, um, to really get serious and, and restore it. Um, and there was like eight, 10 members. And we worked very hard to um, convince the council that we needed a partnership and, um, and, and get it restored. The idea was to restore it not only as a theater, but as a performing arts center. And that's what we ended up with, not a theater, it, it, was a, it's, it is right now a full-fledged uh, performing arts center. The theater was then donated to the city of El Paso. In 1998, the Grand Willitzer organ was returned to El Paso. The organ <clears throat> was sold in, in uh, September 12, 1972 by the private owner to a guy by the name of Beck, who was an airline a pilot for American Airlines, and he was a, an organ buff. What happened is um, Mr. Beck died about one and a half years after he bought it. So he bequeathed it uh, or gave it to his friend, uh, Gilbert um, Swift, who was a banker in, in, in Dallas. And that's the guy that I was, I negotiated with to buy the organ in 1996 and we bought it for $55,000, took it to Houston in um, 18 wheelers, got it restored, brought it back to El Paso. We were not ready to put it in the theater, so the, um, the um, shopping center, the um, uh, Sunland Park Mall, gave us the opportunity to put it in the, in the food court with all the bells and all the whistles and all the pipes, 951 pipes, and the castanets and the marimbas. And we held it in place until we took it and put it back where it belonged. It was a labor of love to save it. And then it was a great team effort between the community foundation and city to team up and to bring it back and to honor its historic legacy by spending a lot of time and money on making sure every detail was, was undertaken to bring its beauty back. After many years of planning, in 2006, the beloved theater was restored. The theater itself is a jewel. It is, a, um, it is uh, listed as a, um, a, as a monument of national significance. That is to say that, that that's the highest uh, a category that uh, that is given to a historic place. Um, but what st stood out was the fact that the theater itself, uh, internally, yes, it was dusty, it was, um, it, 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 it had aged, but at the same time, thank God that the, that the, the decor and the structure itself um, was in place and that it was in terribly good condition. We, it was very, very well kept um, by itself, basically. And um, so we were able to really, really restore this to its original uh, condition and uh, do it historically correct. That, that was a, a big I issue that we, we had to do it right. We could not just go in there and remodel and, and change walls and anything. Everything was the way it was. After so many years of fighting to keep the movie theater open, the Plaza Theater is here to stay forever. <laughs>